Let me have audacity. Yeah, uh, the Drone Look podcast, um, which I probably won't have time to plug, but you can find it linked to on social media. It's generally a podcast about stuff I like, TV, comics, films, whatever. So yeah, but let's let's crack on with Wrong Window. Yeah. So previously on Sascon. Previously on Farscape. Previously on Farscape. Yeah, twice. Um, so last year I was in the middle of writing Occupied, uh, which is I'll come on to in a minute if you missed the meet the author, um, and we were looking at sociological fiction about. Um, storytelling and sociology and their circular relationship that sustains and extends the uh, possibilities of both areas. Um, but this time I wanted to do something um, kind of looking back on, on what I've learned and where I've, I've come to. So there's a couple of things this presentation isn't. It's not about comedy and structure. Amy, as I said, covered that wonderfully area um, earlier. Um, it's not about political debates either. Um, I, I don't want to have those. If, if you want to hit me, your whole Democrat, Republican, Tory, Labour, just please don't. Um, this is about writing. This is, this is why we're here. Um, and if we're on opposing political views, you might learn something from me. Maybe I'll learn something from you. So, um, writing, writing occupied, I found I excelled with comedy and I want to f talk about how I did this. And uh, I did pretty well with the politics aspect, but not enough. Um, I, or at least I wanted more and I want to talk about, um, that as well. So, um, I'm Andre, I'm 48 years of old age and I live in Northern Ireland. If you have trouble with this accent, just think of it as a uh, Liam Neeson or somebody off of Derry Girls. Um, I'm going to run through this in 45 minutes. Um, think of questions, but more importantly, think of answers. I'd like to open up the floor at the end of several voices. Um, so ostensibly, um, this is about writing comedy. Um, uh, occupied as my second or fourth novel, depending on the mood I'm in when you ask me. Um, so, um, I'll talk about a few of my influences because I think that is about how I got there. Um, MASH, I think, is the grinding. Um, so writing from inspiration, I turned to the kind of story that I wanted to write. Um, Occupied, like MASH, is a campsite ensemble. That's what inspired me. There's a lot of, um, particularly in the classic TV series, there's a lot of fast moving dialogue and also the slapstick of the, the MASH movie. Um, so, yeah, maybe stories aren't born but remembered as if they're all along. And, uh, yes, MASH, fast flowing dialogue. Um, ensemble cast um so occupied is about the occupy movement and the background for the younger listeners or less politically engaged listeners um of the time 10 years ago um you might know of the wall street crash of 1929 where banks fell and thus began an age of financial decline um in 2008 this was the same thing though it was deeper and it was more global in scale Activists demonstrated their reactions against the authorities in the badly hit Arab world, which we call the Arab Spring. Um, and by 2010, this uprising had spread to the West, from New York to London, Berlin, Rome. Um, by October 2011, activists made their presence felt in over 951 cities across 82 countries. Um, and they did this by squatting, occupying a building, or more commonly camping in a public space. Uh, the Occupy movement stressed um, participation through weekly carnivals, um, nightly meetings that were open to everybody, lectures uh, were like we're doing here, were taught by volunteers, teachings. There's a, a few of my uh, Occupy Belfast campers with the noted folk singer Billy Bragg. Um, 
and a student of you will have noticed mixing pop and politics is from a song of his um there's uh, me right at the back with my head up um tommy sands renowned folk singer at the front um so we had this kind of structure um where every saturday we had demonstrations a carnival um i had other things i had to take into account um quick reaction demos to unfolding um political and civil disruption we had to figure out where to wash where to poop where to shower break all these meals together um and actually that, just back to that um fire in the bin is worth uh, looking upon because this this was our main source of heat and it was kind of interesting as it's you know you, you all associate the fire with primitive humans um, and just being a centre of warmth, bonding and storytelling. Um, that's an awful lot about where the conversations in Occupied, a mostly dialogue-centric novel, come from. Uh, Justice League International, the 1990s incarnation, Boahaha, um, which is basically just about... It's a workplace comedy. It's about a group of people who kind of become family or or not uh, it's largely sitcom style approach um, i'm not sure how well it's aged i made a podcast on it um well worth checking out though um this is another of my influences press gang um again um subverting exp expectations this was an itv comedy from 1991 for children but it often pitched way above children and young adults um, and has a a wonderful reputation and it was written by Stephen Moffat this is the reason Stephen Moffat got Doctor Who and Sherlock and Hyde and everything that that came up press gang was his first writing job it was 43 episodes long um, strong plots human interest bustling environment um, here's a click quick clip perhaps um, where the characters are being held hostage and trying to talk down a scared gunman. What do you take? Look, I'm in charge, okay? What do you take? Milk, no sugar. We got milk. There's a bottle in the fridge. Hey, that's mine. I spat in it. Yeah, I did too. And me, me too. Oh, I didn't spike. I didn't realise it was yours. <laughs> you guys really disgust me. Do you know that? Oh, look on the bright side. That bottle's really lasted. It's true. Okay, so I'm going to intersperse a bit of uh, theory along along the way. Um, Bernie de Coven, um, the late sadly late Bernie de Coven, was a pioneer in fun and funny computer game design. He worked with Lego, CWT, Mattel, um, computer games and and non non computer games. Um, and De Coven's work is all about the power of adult playfulness, demonstrating how joyfully adults can welcome the opportunity to celebrate their playful selves. He explored how playfulness can possibly affect every aspect of personal and interpersonal, community and institutional health. Um, so, yeah, fun is easy, fun with interaction. Um, not something to strive for but to melt into um, that's kind of um, behind the idea of flow um, the, the concept by Mihaly Chikia. hold on I've got a fix for this Mihaly Chikcent Mihaly Mihaly Chikcent T.I. Um, yeah so um, flow aka the zone um being in this this state of concentration of immersion and energy being absorbed and transformed and you know there's there's all kinds of you know you know this when you're in the writing zone um it happens in computer gaming it happens in sports um it happens in exercise music education and, and spirituality um 
So flow um, is certainly the state that applies to 24 hour comics. Um, 24 hour comics, rapid high speed product development. The idea of 24 hour comics is 24 pages in 24 consecutive hours. No planning, no, just in there and, and draw as fast as you can, or in my case, don't draw very well, but I can, I can tell a story. Um, and this is, this is um, from a story called Mixed Up Media about misunderstanding, sensation, communication, conflict, time and voice, um, fighting against institutions and being um, co-opted by them. And this was a technique that I used to inform first drafts of, of writing occupied and just not worrying too much about staging, just just um, throwing it out and a lot of pieces of dialogue not all of them some got scrapped a lot of pieces of dialogue made it into the novel um, we're here as ourselves as people in wheelchairs standing up that didn't quite make it in uh, but Leon um, is a is sort of a caricature of a radical feminist who became much much more than that um, so um, this one's from The Spook, which is a story about paranoia, insomnia, hostile circumstances and strangers. It's all, all things that very much affected us at Occupy Belfast. Um, it, sorry, I should have said The Spook, I understand, is a racial slur in the US. It's not so in the UK. It refers to covert intelligence, a la 007, playing with the notion of distrust of newcomers at the camp um, and these camps were you know city center strangers arrived all the time mostly it was a very positive thing occasionally it was pretty weird um, the laughing buddha um, or fat buddha or buddhai and buddhai literally means cloth sack so kind of nice for the the idea of people living in very soaked tents. Um, so a jolly nature and funny eccentric personality. Buddha is from the Chan pantheon, which um, domesticated the occult, um, give it more relevance. So this was something I was very interested in doing with Occupied is taking the reality and stretching it to the fantastical edges because there's something very weird about choosing to go out and live in a tent in the city centre um, you're just packing up stuff in your rucksack and going there um, so Chan made magicians, tricksters um, Chan made magicians, tricksters and therefore more relevant to the world um happiness is healing um so happiness um it's really important to have positive relationships to be more grateful to learn to or enjoy our work um happiness doesn't just reduce stress and anxiety um studies in a uh, uh, report in times shown that um, as the body um, improves the mind the mind evaluates the body and the body evaluates the mind um, that might have just been a confusing thing to say um, I'll try and talk about the details that might be more helpful so happiness joy has been shown to have all sorts of effects for the cardiovascular system for the immune system, for speed wound healing, inflammation levels and hormones. There's more oxygen when you laugh. So we're like trees. Laughter stimulates your organs. There's a social element, of course, with regards to stress, response, soothing tension. It makes for better interactions with people. Um, Physically, again, the body produces natural painkillers. So bye-bye endorphins, time to relax. Bye-bye neuropeptides, hello cognition. 
Um, so, yeah. Um, Bill Hexer, one of the, the great, great comedians, um, probably of all time, um, but a man who certainly had dangerously negative lows uh, in his career. Loved and um, beloved. Um, but yeah, so uh, I think we're all familiar with this idea of, you know, the, the, the sad comedian, the tragic comedian. Um, so I looked into this um, psychology today, had a really interesting piece about how comedians have humour ability. So we talk about different types of intelligence, like musical intelligence is regularly ranked um, as so in, in general intelligence levels are higher levels of intelligence people have the more people with musical intelligence are found in those in that overlap um, so we think of ability that way that you know we all have stuff we're great at and, and somebody who's working as a comic full time is obviously going to have a lot more tricks going to be a lot more funnier than um, me um, there's um, psychology today reckon though that humour gives us short term benefits um, comedians and humour writers die younger comedian success parallels mortality rate um, but these are limited studies that people have come up with there are other causes um, so psychology today performed their own study in 2018 looking at a bunch of improv people a bunch of comedians and they found that there were higher rates of infection more health issues um, and um, comedians were actually over optimistic about their own health about this idea that the humor just and happiness just well humor nurtures um, because it's yeah it's an obvious strain on the person that's coming up with this stuff. Um, a shed load of really happy readers aren't going to take away from the burden in creating my novel and all that stress and paranoia. Um, but that said, that said, these health issues, these higher rates of infection that funny writers have is a correlational study. It's not cause to effect. Um, so that is worth bearing in mind um, and a few other quotes I just lifted out of there Immanuel Kant humour is about cog the cognitive shift to playfulness uh, Hugo Schoffer recently a buffer against depression and hopelessness humour is a part is in part a benign violation it's a violation towards a sweet spot um, so my take on that is that there, these are the problems that are fit any one working creatively or facing particularly the self-employed and the unemployed okay so red dwarf um seasons one and two are another great influence on me about two guys essentially isolated in a social pattern um stuck with people that hate one another um and these folk as well um always sunny um they distrust one another as well. They they're constantly talking over one another. Characters who speak before they think. And what one of the things there's many things to love about Always Sunny, but for me, it's you can see in these actors that they love creating this material. They love riffing off one another. They love that they own the product and the way it develops and and creates. And it really comes across in a way that kind of says to me, um, yeah, me and my mates could do this as well. And I think that's still valuable, having that support network. Um, so uh, there's Rob Michael Henney and me um, as Fat Mac. Um, so yeah, stealing. Stealing is, is great. Um, it's kind of maybe the point of being inspired um when we're talking about tone um is, is to go on and pass the message on yourself um there's my occupied face mask which was made from the the front cover 
um, which I didn't tell the artist about, but there's only one and two in existence. My editor um, got one. So I'm just going to talk about um, pop for a bit, about some of the stuff in Occupied. So this is silica gel. This is commonly found in packaging, almost always in tents. And I have a scene where a couple of characters, Kat, Kira and Shay, talk about this. Um, it says, sometimes it's called silica salts, throw away, do not eat. Um, so Shay wants to eat it. Um, I've always wondered about that. Desigan, it looks like coconut to me. So it's about, you know, taking your environment and whatever. It is a very small detail on the political scale. I think one to have another um, conversation around. Uh, a line from, uh, there's a conversation in the book where if look, characters debate, if Luke had paid attention to Yoda's warning and Empire Strikes Back, would he still have a hand? And this is a type of thing we talk about when we're out there saving the world, protesting, um, helping the he homeless, um, running soup kitchens. We're just human like everybody else. Um, we talk about nonsense, minutia. The Anonymous from David Lloyd's Beef of Vendetta and James McTeague's movie. Anonymous is a symbol for any one of us with all our aspects united against oppression. Um, now, I don't know if you've been following the news today, um, but Anonymous have declared a war on the Russian government. They have brought down a bunch of Kremlin associated sites. They've hacked in to Russian state television with images of the, the bombings of refugees and they've played Ukrainian music on Russian radio stations. Um, fantastic. Um, but if you're only familiar, so this is classic anonymous from way back when. Um, but if you'd seen basing your anonymous view off of QAnon or the, the online videos where there's a very menacing and severe voice um, we are anonymous. We do not forgive. We do not forget. We are legion. Uh, it's quite menacing and severe. Um, so I was very interested in exploring that spectrum. Um, so there's a serious anonymous member who refuses a camp's hospitality. We are anonymous. We do not need hot cocoa or Jaffa cakes. I thought that was kind of fun to play around with. There's also a character called Leon, my favourite character. Leon is forever trying to impress and telling everybody that she is anonymous, which, as she is reminded, kind of misses a point. So these are concepts that I, I played around with. And um, once you understand the concepts, um, you can have so much fun with them. And I'll come back to that. This is Leonard Reefus. Um, Rufus, um, uh, best known to me as the English translator for Barefoot Gen, A Tale of Hiroshima, one of the best comic books I've ever read. Um, really one of the best comic books I've ever read. Um, and Leonard um, is interested in um, breaking down indifference over macro issues. So his, his comics include Food First, all the atomic comics. He's got a sort of a sense of optimism and faith um, while he's, he's tackling these um, dark subject matters. As he does so, he finds potential in finding his own creative solutions that we no longer need to practice turning off our brain every time we turn on the news. Um, and as the internet evolves, and more and more people gain visibility. Um, I see more and more people practicing edutainment. I, uh, there were a lot of great British stand-up comedians who did this. Mark Thomas, um, political activism. Mark Steele, um, also, um, he did the Mark Steele lectures, um, which were sort of comic um, humanities documentary series. Rob Newman, who talks about the invasion of Iraq and 
oil and how this is almost identical to um, some of the outlying causes at the beginning of the First World War. Um, I'm sure you can think of um, loads of other people. Um, today I find out anything done by Simon Whistler. Um, st stick anything in the, the comments. I'm not actually reading the comments, but I will get there once I on full screen. Form 11-1. I, I knew I had um, occupied a told over 10 days, or 10, sorry, 10 weeks, with a weekly demonstration. And every time the characters demonstrate, they have to fill in one of these forms. Um, so that meant I had to get my head around a form and, and read through it and think about how I would plan a demonstration. Um, so I've got Cat and Owen trying to make sense of these forms. When does a protest end? Um, so they discuss whether it runs until one o'clock or into the follow on gathering, which runs to five o'clock or as it's a permanent protest that they're involved in, should they answer non applicable, which is a really like silly notion, but one I've gotten a lot of positive feedback on. Um, private finance initiative. So um, <laughs> what? Oh, it's that. So, uh, private, private Finance Initiative, PFI, is basically a mortgage on public built like schools, hospitals, national buildings. Um, that's what I worked out. And I have one of my characters voice this. Um, it's more public financing than private. Um, Levin voices this. Gary explains... Um, that it's paid by the city to city developers. And this type of institutional restructuring affects where Padre gets his unemployment benefit checks and when Leon gets fed. So it's about exploring these quite boring concepts, understanding them and taking them out to where they affect the characters' lives. The recession of 2008. Um, so Kira, who is a 17, doesn't understand how it could happen. Um, which I, I think is, is perfectly reasonable. Um, because the banks screwed up. That's not undebatable. The banks plunged the world into a greater existence of global poverty. And then the government forgave and forget. Um, so... In trying to explain to Kira, political politically aware Owen imitates Sean Connery as James Bond, explaining the banks were working off IOUs with no value, a license to bill. Gary tries to explain it in terms of Fred having no money, but with lots of people borrowing from him on the basis that he does. I've got 11 pence in my pocket, says Fred, when they're all over and done. And this makes Gary's point for him. Exactly. Um, infographics are great. Um, sketch out ideas to help you through stuff. Um, or, or even easier, there's a lot of great infographics out there to help you. Um, that, that break down stuff like that. Um, and when you're writing politics or political aspects, economic, that will allow you to follow through and stuff. Comedy is not always on. This is, I can't, I can't quite remember if this is from um, Oakland or Denver, Portland or New York. Um, but it was necessary in my story to have this reflection on external happenings. And so many of the Occupy camps interconnected, people talking to one another across the globe, just like we're doing. Comedy can make deeply unsettling moments even more profound. So I was reading about <coughs> these brutalities and they dragged me out of my humour. And I knew that I wanted the characters to experience the same sun stop and to voice my horror um, as they probably did um, when they were 
you know, to various camps all around the world and photos and videos like this came in. So confronting this really unsettling stuff um, can allow something raw to come through. Um, this is me with um, James Roberts, author of one of my favourite comic book series, uh, More Than Meets the Eye and Lost Light. Um, James is, is great. He, exp he <coughs> I would never have thought it was possible for somebody to do a Transformers story that explores um, gender fluidity, left wing politics, um, sociological, the whole gamut of sociological storytelling. Um, so I interviewed James for my, my podcast um, and he had this to say. And I'd say the same about sitcoms. When you come to love characters um, and their kind of default setting is casual interactions. Um, and, you know, when you can allow and, and be brave enough to admit humour into your storytelling, it makes those moments of drama and tension and tragedy a thousand times more effective. You know, your connection to the characters, you know, because they, they seem more human, is deeper and therefore, when bad things happen to them, it's felt all the more keenly. So there we go. Um, and using character A and character B and character C, create feedback. Um, using characters who know about things with specific attitudes to teach others. Um, exploring that brutality and interaction and reflection. Um, gives a story a groundedness, a connectedness, and a depth. Um, because this ha humor stories are a cognitive shift, a buffer against depression. Um, so we're back to um, back to this idea of the the artist and the burden on the the artist and internally. Um, we want to surround ourselves with a support network um, and that's um, writers, friends. What you often find um, when you have, I mean, I was very fortunate and I had two writing groups. Um, I went from one to the other in a sort of, it was a long gestation. It was like seven years, seven, eight years writing this. So I had one chapter where I had 15 editor reviewers on it um, so you've got all that friendship and professional support and you know people would read my stuff um, and they'd they'd make some comment uh, where they maybe didn't understand something that I'd written and they, they phrased it a certain way which made me chuckle and I thought well they can't they don't really they, they say this character who said this needs clarity um, so why don't I stick their message for clarity in the mouth of another character and I came up with a few really good lines on that um, with support networks you've got um, you've got people and friendships to par over um, stories um, this is me with Claire Byrne editor uh, when we just received a print copy of Occupied Claire, um, absolutely dedicated, diligent, um, and as much as you need a support network, you also need a, pro a professional editor, um, and, and by that I mean an editor who takes a professional approach, and pay them what you can. Um, Claire was worth much more than I paid her, um, and it led to another collaboration. Um, a late idea of mine was that um, I create a soundtrack for the novel and um, Claire got very excited and she had all these ideas. So we created this soundtrack between us um, and that there'll be a link somewhere i'm really proud of it actually um you'll notice the bottom corner we have occupied saturday soundtrack so there's a complete list on spotify but every saturday i'll put out a theme for a chapter or for a character um 
And I've also used Twitter to reach my broader network. And I, I really don't like marketing. I really don't like pimping my slutty wares at people. I'm, it might be God's gift to writing, but I really just don't like doing that. It's cheap and tacky. But I found a way that I could do it. And that was by running commentaries um, through Occupied, which I do love commentaries because it caters to my, my vanity, my narcissism. Um, so I run these on Twitter. Um, and it's a way of keeping that idea of this novel in the air. Um, so there you go. Um, infographics, again, yeah. Um, I have a note on it. Coloured pen infographics, yeah. Um, this is a talk you just seen. Um, this was a late edition, so I can't quite remember why it's here. Um, oh, a few things I forgot to say about Claire editing. The book, especially if you're really invested in it, is a long, long journey. Um, so once you've editors and reviewers coming on board, that cuts down on the feelings of isolation and leads to new collaborations. Um, so, uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. there we go.